Afternoon, everybody. Um, as Alison said, she introduced us all, and this is a, a co-presentation with um, Kira, Jane, and I. And I know a lot of you. My name is Dr. Mary Delaney. I'm the head of the Library and Information Service in IT Carlo. And what we're doing together is giving um, an overview of the research activity that the three of us have been involved in at different stages in our careers. And we're following very much the same template, where we're going to talk about our research experience, the benefits that it has brought to us, and some recommendations recommendations for people who are doing research or considering doing research. Um, so my research experience to date has very much focused around um, academic writing to inform the profession and a lot of us do that in terms of blogs and we all I think in the room would um, be aware of Helen Fallon and her academic writing blog and um, all the work Helen has done to encourage us um, in terms of academic writing but I would have certainly written some pieces over the years for Helen and as well for Scannell Focus and over the years done a number of short pieces of writing that really explore practice and share findings. And often when people think about research, they think maybe about big research projects, but really we're talking today about all kinds of research. In more recent years, I undertook some doctoral research, which obviously is a longer piece of writing um, and allowed me to explore practice within theory and beyond. And I suppose that some of the things I would advise people about in terms of that are making sure that you find a topic that you like, that you're interested in, and that will sustain you for the length of the work um, as it's ongoing. It, it is a long body of work, so you need to have a long-term commitment and you have to really like the topic in order to see it through to the end. Um, but it, different forms of writing, but both very much of benefit um, to the profession and both something I'm really glad that I undertook over the years. Some um, benefits and insights, I would say, from my research experience is particularly around doctoral research. It does allow you to, to create an interdisciplinary di dialogue between the library and information profession and other professions. So in my case, um, it enabled me to take library issues and situate them in the field of education and look at the concept of information literacy, but look at it in a, a situation around pedagogy and education more broadly. Another benefit I would say for me in terms of taking on doctoral research was it allowed me to understand the process and as a result in terms of working in a library environment to have um, a wider understanding of the different uh, processes involved when people are undertaking research. And just to have that understanding helps, I think, us to be um, librarians more, more aware of all the issues that people face when they come to us in all the different ways. A theoretical wider understanding of library issues, which I think was helpful too. Um, and once you're doing doctoral work, I think it does situate you in a wider network, and it certainly did in my case situate me with a lot of colleagues involved in education. I was the only librarian in, um, doing the research with my research cohort, and as a result, then people start asking questions like, why would a librarian do doctoral research? And you can have those discussions. If people are considering doing doctoral work, some advice I would have is that it is a real growth area. There's a number of people in this room undertaking doctoral research and doing similar projects. So it is a real growth area in Ireland. There's a lot of people um, exploring it. But we really are considered uniquely positioned in terms of our profession because we know how to do a lot of things. So we know how to find information. We know how it works. We're good at things like referencing and managing information, and we can't underestimate that those are big skills and things that really help in terms of the research process. We're curators and creators. So we have for years been curators, but really oh, we're all, to some degree, in whatever way we might be doing research, we're creating research, be that writing an article related to um, practice or be that bigger pieces of work. And it's, and it's good to reflect on that. And Bigger pieces of research do allow us to situate practice into theory and maybe look at something that we're already doing and understand it more broadly and through a different lens. And as I said, there is a really big community of practice in this field and there is real opportunity for us to find critical friends and to help one another on our journeys. Now I'm going to hand you over to Kira McCaffrey who's going to speak about her research experience. Okay, thanks Mary. So as Deputy Librarian at the University of Limerick, I, together with the Library Director and the Management Group, have an overarching remit to continually improve library services at UL. To do that, we need to generate evidence through assessment and data gathering. 
and it's been through library assessment that my engagement with research and publishing has developed over the years. The type of research that I've uh, engaged in, as many of us have in our libraries, is practitioner-led research. Um, it's often called action research, action-oriented, applied, there's lots of different names for it. It's done in a practical setting, often by practitioners. There's estimates that between 50 and 60% of articles in list journals emanate from practicing librarians, and many high-ranking list journals welcome practice-based research, and it's also common in other applied fields such as education, health sciences, and business. So while Mary and Jane will talk about the doctoral experience, my message today is that there are other ways to be research active if you don't go the doctoral route. Okay, so I've published um, in academic journals and been through the peer review process three times. Twice have been in quarter one percentile journals in the Scopus list. I've another recently submitted with two colleagues, Michelle Breen and Mary Dundon uh, from the University of Limerick, and we're going through the peer review process again. And I've been a peer reviewer for a quarter one percentile journal on one occasion. So I would say it's modest, my, my output, but enough to speak with some confidence, but not enough to have forgotten the feeling of newness. Um, I will tweet the open access versions of these articles um, after this talk, but just the type of, of projects that I've been involved in and worked with others on and have published on include the use and perceptions of LibQual in Irish academic libraries, exploring and finding sol solutions to the issue of noise and the provision of quiet space in academic libraries, exploring and finding solutions to the issue of desk reserving, which is students leaving belongings on seats for very long periods, and the space constraints that that can cause in terms of space management. And I'm currently looking at a decade of transformation at the University of Limerick by doing a longitudinal analysis of survey data over the last 10 years. The research methods that I've used include uh, user surveys, as many of us use. For me, mostly LibQual, which is a very rigorous and well-tested research tool. I've also used interviews, and we've branched out recently to using focus groups and local user surveys in UL. The purpose of my research is to improve practice in UL library and to inform practice elsewhere. And you can see it's very evidence-based, very applied. The assessment is closely connected to my work, but the publications and the more deeper research and data analysis I do see as a CPD activity. The benefits have been many, I would say, for me personally. From a professional perspective, engaging in research has upskilled me in all aspects of scholarly communi communication. I think it's really important for all librarians, regardless of what area you work in and what role you have, to have a good understanding of the research process. And many of these concepts behind me um, can be very abstract if you don't work directly with researchers. By engaging in research, you get a really good understanding of what all of these mean in a real life sense, why they're important, and where the library fits with them. This understanding, I feel, has informed my job in recruiting new roles, in developing UL library staff skills and scholarly communications, and in library-wide planning. Strategically, I think it strengthened my understanding of UL strategy and also national and international education strategy, which is so dominated by the research agenda. And from a personal perspective, I feel it's a great CPD activity. It fits well into a very busy job and family life. It's self-motivated, so you do it when you can and you have the time, and when life is too busy, you don't do it. In terms of... Oh, I should go back. I have one more. How do I go back? Oh, you can read my tips while I'm still talking about insights. In terms of insights and the greatest benefit that I have found, and the reason that I keep doing it, has been to see through the eyes of a researcher, insofar as I can. And there's many insights to be gained from this perspective, as both Mary and Jane will echo. The one I'd like to share with you today is about the language that we use in librarianships around scholarly communication, and particularly around advocacy. I think we need to speak the same language as researchers and particularly focus on the what's in it for me aspect. When I'm wearing my researcher hat, what I want to know is what will make my research better, easier, faster, more organized, and critically increase its impact. Essentially, how can the library help me to communicate my research more widely? In terms of advice for others, here's some tips and advice. For most of us who have published, and I know there are many in this room that have, and many of those, we started with Helen Fallon, as Jane already mentioned. And the academic, uh, academic Writing Librarian's blog, poster-winning blog, now contains a wealth of advice on getting started. I'd be very happy to talk to anyone who wants to know more about practice-based research and share the knowledge and experience that I've gained. 
Overall, if you do engage in research and publication, I would advocate that you continually observe yourself as a researcher. See where you struggle. What obstacles and challenges do you encounter? And always think in the back of your head, what are the opportunities for the library to step in and help navigate the research journey? Then put your librarian hat back on, turn your learning into action, and make those opportunities happen in your library. Thank you. Over to Jane. My name is Jane Burns. I'm the research officer in the School of Nursing at the Royal College of Surgeons, and I'm a part-time lecturer in the School of Information Studies at UCD. Undertaking a PhD has been one of the best and most challenging decisions I have ever made. I am in the start of year two of the, at UCD, where I'm working part-time towards a PhD in education in the area of medical humanities. The experience is challenging primarily because of the amount of time and the workload involved. There are very few weekends off, and my mind never stops thinking about the topic and what must be done. It can also be a lonely space, as much of the work and the thinking is done alone with minimum supervision. Having library and research skills has definite advantages in many ways in the PhD process. We understand the mechanics of sourcing, organizing, and disseminating content. Knowing how to navigate the library and having insight into the 360 degree view of the research process does give you a definite advantage. And for the very first time, I have been considered one of the cool kids in class because I am a librarian. But this popularity comes with a price and potential exploitation. However, undertaking a PhD is a different kind of research experience. The researcher is as equally important an element to the research process as the literature, the methodologies, and any other research activities. This is where the challenge comes about. As a PhD researcher, you must suspend your library perspective. As you move away from the management of information to become an integral component of the research journey. So why librarians and PhDs? We see more and more there's a number of librarians and it seems to be a growing trend of people progressing in their careers and then wanting to undertake their own PhD research. For me, I was inspired by other colleagues such as Mary Delaney and John Cullen but also from colleagues outside of our profession, and in particular those in education, who are researching their passions and interests. So what are the career possibilities with a PhD in the field of library and information studies or information management? It's not very clear, but as we can see, our, career, our profession is changing and evolving, and the possibilities will emerge. There are opportunities to get involved in lecturing and other academic research work. Librarians tend to be generalists, which is supported by the fact that we know absolutely everything. <laughs> Many of us come from a range of different backgrounds and interests and have developed new ones. And the opportunity to research in these areas is very appealing. The librarian as a researcher is a natural space, but one that must be developed. In the same way, it is so infuriating for others outside of our profession to think that they could be librarians just because they like books. There are skills as a researcher that need to be mastered in order to move into this space. Working on a PhD for me has been unlike any other research experience I have had. To be challenged with the responsibility and the primary goal to create new knowledge is daunting. There was a considerable learning curve that I had to undertake to fully engage in the PhD process. And these are some of the critical skills that are required and that need constant development. Critical thinking, an understanding of research methodologies, and especially writing, everything from a brief abstract to a full length manuscript, and accepting the responsibility that you are creating new knowledge. So, if you like learning and you have a passion for subjects, then, uh, passion for a subject, then undertaking a PhD is a route for you to consider. The pursuit of a PhD is an enduring, daring adventure. Hand it back to Mary.
So the final slide here to wrap up for our last five minutes is very much um, what we've done is we've given an overview in terms of three different perspectives on research activity, the types of research that we're doing in our libraries and the impact that it's having. And really what we are here to say today is we're here to, if, to help anybody who might be considering any aspect of what we talked about. If you're considering taking on a bigger research project or a smaller one or getting started in any way, we really encourage people to go for it and to get in touch with us, all three of us, if you think we can help. Um, it's a real genuine, a sincere offer of what can we do and how can we help and how can we build on the already good work already established with the work of Helen in academic writing um, and other areas. Um, at the LILAC conference a couple of years ago, um, Claire McAvinia in DIT, Jane Secker um, and myself set up a Dr. Librarians Google group where there's a number of um, librarians who are undertaking research or considering undertaking research um, joined a Google group and that's something maybe that we can look at as well in terms of developing. And also then just to leave you maybe with a question or a comment around what events would you like to see run by Connell, by the LAI, by Thea? to support librarians as researchers, like what more can we do to help one another and to really build up a strong research community of practice among our libraries. Thank you all. <laughs>